Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about people having fun with cars, not spending a fortune and having a good time. The name says it all. The slow kids. Well, maybe not that slow, like wise people. They're slow at spending a lot of money. Now you might think he's got a fortune in his car. He put a lift kit on it. Guess what he spent on it? Got everything on eBay for like 60 bucks. Yes, there are people like me out there that they break on the smallest amount of money that they spend. Not, I've got $100,000 in this car, but I spent $60 on the kit. Now they're not all Subarus. They got all kinds of different cars, but they don't want to spend a fortune. They also have a sense of humor. Now check this out. Nice looking car, right? You think the guy's got a fortune in it, huh? He bought it last year for $3,500. Yeah, I'm not making it up. There's a real advantage of being in one of these clubs. Everybody knows everybody. So they're swapping parts. So they want to upgrade something. Somebody else wants their own part. There's a lot of sharing. There's a lot of saving, too. A lot of fun on the cheap. Hey, you can have a lot of fun for a low price. They're still zippy cars. With that box of design, center of gravity being lower, these things handle like a drink. When you're this low to the ground, you can have a lot of fun zipping around. They can handle the turns. They're kind of like large go-karts. Look at that. <laughs> you can have a lot of fun. Especially when you're in a closed-in parking lot like this with abandoned shopping mall buildings all over the place. Sears is gone, but fun is here. You can really have a lot of fun in these things. It's not necessarily straight line speed. As an example in this Subaru, he's got about 10 grand total invested in it, and he's having about 400 horsepower to the wheels. Considering that today, the average American used car is going for $27,800, it's not a bad deal to have this kind of fun. And check this out. He can get 24 miles a gallon on the highway. You try doing that with another 400 horsepower car that handles like this thing does. And yeah, it's an everyday driver. His kids sit in the back. Ain't there any cars out there you can have that kind of fun, that cheap, and still take your kids to school, and your wife isn't complaining that, hey, it's only a two-seater, nobody can drive around in it, you gotta get a different car. <laughs> a car for all seasons. Now let's compare that to guys that are actually racing the cars. Now, this originally had a junkyard Corvette engine in it, which was blown in a race. $8,000 later, it's all rebuilt. Humongous turbo, race tires, special rear ends, all the suspension systems. So now it's a quarter and eighth mile drag strip car. Drag strip cars cost a reasonable amount of money. Now, as far as drag strip cars goes, this is probably, they said about 30 grand total in it. That's cheap for a drag strip car, let me tell you. But it's a long way from a Subaru too. <laughs> Oh, well, there's a few additions in the back seat. Got a nitrous oxide tank. Not your normal everyday driver. Look at the exhaust system. It's not here. What do they do with it? It's coming out here. <laughs> Farmers love this one. You can smell the corn. This baby's running on ethanol. You want to drag, you need a little more octane than you do in the little Subarus. Some people's modifications may get a little bit carried away, but really, it's kind of cold outside today. <laughs> but don't warn him. He already knows that. Yeah, there's still some do-it-yourselfers out here these days. And people always complain that Volvos are boring cars. I disagree with this one. It's definitely not boring. Now, if you want a true all-purpose off-road vehicle, you might check this thing out. Well, you certainly don't have to worry about clearance if I can fit under this thing. Now, granted, this is not street legal. It came on its trailer over here, but it sure looks like a lot of fun. The thing is, you're gonna get stuck like my grandson did and his, and his girlfriend had to get out and they had to pull it out of the mud. I don't think this is gonna have any problems. You ever wondered what it looks like inside one of these? Well, here we go for a ride. Here we have the snorkel, so you don't have to worry about flooding it out. You'll be drowned by them if it gets out. They're not made for speed, they're made for getting wherever you want to go. Well now if speed scares you, here's something that'll really shake you up. Here's a passenger. And what's under the hood? My favorite colors, black and white. You can't get any more basic than that. Clown wise, I guess. It's a little red too, so we got the clown thing. Okay, my ears are ringing now, but in a good way. <laughs> now going back to the cheap fun, here's a car that has $600 invested in it.
You can have a lot of fun, Chief, too. <laughs> it's the ice cream man. <laughs> so now you know a bit more about Americans and their love affair with cars, whether it's expensive cars, cheap cars. But one thing rings true, they tend to be unique cars when they're done with them or are in the process of making them unique. And here's some bonus questions and answers. U.S. man asked ABA 55 says, do Mazda vehicles cost more to maintain than Toyota? Are Mazdas expensive to fix? Now, of course, it depends on which ones you buy. You buy the little bitty Mazda 3s and stuff like that, Mazda Miatas. They are well made, especially the later model ones, and they aren't all that expensive to fix. But you get into the higher end ones and you get the oddball parts. Yes, they are more expensive to fix than Toyotas. One, there's not the big aftermarket. Market like the Toyota parts. So let's say you go to a Toyota deal and you find out a part is 800 bucks, you might find an aftermarket one for $200 that works perfectly fine. You won't find such an aftermarket for Mazda parts. I know that from years of working on cars. People would have a Mazda and I'd say, man, this electric part is so expensive. Let's see if we can find someplace else. Well, you couldn't find it aftermarket because they didn't sell enough, so there was no aftermarket manufacturer. In Houston, there was a Mazda junkyard. That's all they had was Mazdas. Well, they know you couldn't get these electric parts anywhere in the dealer or them so even though it was a used part that was 12 years old they were charging 50 60 percent of what a brand new one would cost and just some used one off a junk car so sometimes their parts are more expensive than the Toyotas the way that it goes when you don't have something that's as popular that's why you know you want an absolute car that can last forever and you're not going to spend too much money on parts and there's humongous aftermarkets get yourself a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic because there's so many millions of them out there there's a big aftermarket and then of course in the junkyard there's tons of them that got wrecked that you could use parts off dirt cheap that's more the way to go the more popular a car is the easier it is to get parts and generally the easier it is to get fixed because even if you don't fix them yourself hey smart mechanics what do they work on the cars that millions of them are sold so they have millions of possible customers it's the guys that do the specialty cars there aren't that many out there so if you buy one hey if they're a specialty guy that fixes it they're gonna charge you way too much money because they have to charge their customers more money because they have less customers so they have to make more money per customer it's just logic Probably Radical Misfit says, Scotty, I'm looking for my first car. I'm headed to college. I found a 2017 Chevy Cruze with 37,000 miles and a 2018 Volkswagen Jetta 1.4 automatic with 27,000 miles. Both are about the same price. What do you think? Are there alternatives? Well, you actually picked two of the worst cars ever made. The Jetta's junk and the Cruze is even worse. I would not touch either of those. If you want to go 100,000 miles trouble-free, look at a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic and just leave it at that keep looking. Now, you're going to have to probably get one with more mileage, but it doesn't matter. The Volkswagen will fall apart before 100,000 miles, and so will the Cruze, where a Toyota and a Honda, Corolla or a Civic, those things can go two, 300,000 miles. So, keep that in mind. You can buy one of those with 100-something thousand, get it relatively cheaply, and it'll still go another 100,000. And your insurance is going to be cheaper, too. The older a car, the cheaper the insurance. It's your first car, right? 17, 18, the insurance are still high because they're worth something. You get an older car, they're not worth as much. The insurance is cheaper. You'll save a lot more money that way, too. You're going to college, obviously, you need to save money. 1980s, car lover says, Scotty, is a Toyota Yaris a good quality Toyota car? I'm asking for a friend. It's not a good quality Toyota car because it's not a Toyota. They're made by Mazda. They're decent quality, though. They're decently made vehicles. They're nothing fancy, and that's what they're for. Toyota kind of gave up making the really cheap cars. They tried the Tercel, which we mechanics called turd cells because of the problems they had. The Yaris's are made by Mazda, but they're decent cars. They're a little bitty. They don't ride all that well. They're bumpity bumpity, but I've had customers with them at 160,000 or more miles, and they still were driving down the road, and they never put all that much money into them. They're not particularly fast. They don't corner all that well. They're bumpy rides, but if you want a cono box car, they're not bad, and you can get used ones pretty cheap, and they could still run quite some time, especially if you get a later model one. Mazda quality has been going up over the years as far as I'm concerned, so it could still be a decent buy used for get one cheap, and it might last quite some time. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.